Hey, this is Annie Grace, and today I'm answering readers' questions. I have a question from Francesca. She says, my biggest optical obstacle is my memory of how alcohol tastes. This only bothers me when I go out to dinner or I'm at a social event. I understand that initially alcohol did not taste good and I trained myself to like it, but now that memory has long faded and I only remember how great wine tastes. When I get the urge to have a sip, I rely on mindfulness to remember where that sip will lead. Is that the only thing to do or is there another strategy that I can employ? So this is such a great question. And it is something that can really trip us up because, you know, I make a really great case for the fact that you acquired this taste and you didn't love it at first. And nobody really loves their first, you know, sip unless they're sipping something super fruity and sugary like Malibu rum and Coke or something like that. But ultimately, you acquired the taste for wine and hard alcohol and beer and whatever it seems like you love now. But the truth is you, you did acquire it. So now that taste is an acquired taste that you do enjoy. So how do you overcome that? How do you get around that? I want to give you some, some things. First of all, I want you to understand that whatever is learned can absolutely be unlearned with time. So I loved my wine, like loved, loved, loved. I remember spending, you know, many hours happily walking through the liquor store, picking, choosing, testing. I remember going to different wine tastings and feeling super posh about it and being excited and comparing it and all of these things. Like I was such uh, all in all the time with, with the wine. And then when, after I had stopped drinking for it was probably close to a year, maybe just over. I remember a friend of mine poured a glass of wine and I could not believe how intense it smelled. And not only how intense, but how bad it smelled. So just rest in the knowledge, first of all, that over time you will unlearn this. You will unacquire the taste. It will ultimately smell bad and you'll know then it won't taste any good. So that's one thing, just rest in that knowledge that what you're having to do now of really being mindful and really, you know, having to like look at, okay, I know where that one step will lead and really being conscious of it. That doesn't last forever. All changes happen like that, right? We take something, we make a change, we start acting it out. And then eventually we rewire our brain through our actions to where that pattern and that habit ultimately changes and it becomes effortless. So just know that that will happen. You can unlearn everything you learn. Also, I want to tell you about a study you may have heard of already, but there was a study of 6,000 wine drinkers and they compared cheap wine to expensive wine, a blindfolded taste test, and they couldn't tell the difference. So there's a big body of evidence to say that we think we love it. We think we can tell the difference. We think we know. I mean, I was, I was snobby about my wine, which was funny too, because it's like, oh no, I don't want to drink that one. That one's, you know, whatever. But then if it was all there was in the house, <laughs> guess who was drinking that wine she didn't really like? Yep, right here. It was me. Uh, so that's really important to know and understand is that, you know, we think that we can tell the difference, but sometimes this thing, this obstacle is really just masquerading as another part of your brain trying to get you to do the thing that it had been relying on for that dopamine release for you know who knows how long years even decades so understand and look at it kind of in this like loving curious way of just saying okay i see you you're trying to really convince me that i'm really missing out just because my taste buds aren't having a party tonight but i see that there's something deeper here so be aware that that might totally be the case and to kind of underline that I want to share something else that I've talked about a few times, but I think it's so relevant to this question. And that's this idea of what else, if we knew it was harming us, would we really kind of pine over for so long? So let me give you this example. My second son was born and all of a sudden I started having extremely intense stomach pain, like cramping and pain. And I didn't know what it was. And I started to eliminate different foods from my diet to figure out what it was. Cause I'd gone to the doctor and they said, you're having a histamine reaction. It means you're basically allergic to something that you're eating. And ultimately after months and months of insane pain and drama, I found out it was eggs and I love eggs. Oh my gosh, give me a deviled egg. I am the happiest person. I love them. I probably eat them every breakfast. I put them in my smoothies. I absolutely love eggs. <sighs> so bummer. I can't eat eggs anymore. But I didn't feel over the long term that that was really a bummer. I mean, I felt so relieved to know the source of my problem and Egg substitutes, they don't taste like eggs. You know, you could say alcohol, go for alcohol-free wine, but 
it might not taste to you. I've never actually tried alcohol-free wine, but it might not taste to you like wine tastes. Uh, but the problem is that I couldn't replace eggs. There's nothing to really replace eggs. But I was so grateful not to be in a situation where I was in crippling pain all the time that I was pretty happily, easily able to let go of eggs. And yeah, I was a bit sad about it. And yeah, I was like, okay, bummer. But it didn't ruin every single time I went out to breakfast. You know, I just order a side of potatoes, a side of fruit, a side of bacon and call it a day. And it was great. But that's the thing is, you know, again, it might be something deeper if it's literally making you, if it's the biggest obstacle, if it's making you feel like your experience are ruined because you can't have the taste, really compare that to some sort of food you might have had to give up. Because giving up eggs, again, it's not going to ruin every time I go out to breakfast. In fact, it's not going to be much more than a blip. It's going to be, yeah, it takes some getting used to, probably a few months for me to remember, for me to get used to. Yeah, I might have a little pity party. Poor me, I can't eat eggs. But then I pretty much get over it, <laughs> put on my big boy pants, and move on with life, right? And so if that's not happening for you, again, I'd examine it a little closer and say, hmm, is it really just the taste? Or is it still that my brain is trying to get me to do this thing because it knows this dopamine release has been there in the past for me? And not that there's anything wrong with that, by the way, at all. It's just that simply that awareness can kind of move you from this, oh, it's just the taste and I'm so focused on, I'm missing out on the taste for me, to, uh, oh, okay, I see. This is just part of the whole thing and this is going to go away as I move further and further down this path. So I just wanted you to um, maybe reframe that. So yes, right now the strategies you're doing are amazing. Mindfulness, saying, okay, where's this first sip gonna lead? Is it gonna be worth it? Understand and know that you're not going to have to do those forever, that this will absolutely become effortless. And uh, you know, there's another thing that always comes up. It's like this pairing between wine and cheese or wine and steak and stuff like that. And I think that's another area where you can think through all of these things. It'd be like, yeah, am I willing to trade the idea that maybe I had, you know, a taste bud orgasm a few times a week because I was able to combine wine and cheese and that was just the best thing on the planet? Am I am I willing to, which I'm being sarcastic, but am I willing to trade that for actually living a more present life, healing my relationships, looking better, feeling better, you know, reverse aging my body literally? Like, is that a fair trade off? And just just kind of say yes and, and make peace with it. Um, Mark, I think Manson is how you say his last name. He wrote The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. And he talks about this idea of you just have to choose your problems. So this idea that we're not going to have problems, that's just not true. So you're just going to have to choose your problem. Are you going to have the problem of, man, I, I feel like I missed the pairing of wine and cheese? Or are you going to have the problem of, man, I had six glasses and don't remember what I said and came home in a blackout. So choose your problems. And as you choose your problems intentionally, you'll be choosing higher and higher and higher quality problems and understand that no matter what, no matter where you are, there's still going to be, quote, problems associated with it. So hope that helps and have a great day. Have you tried the alcohol experiment? Okay, if not, drop everything and go to thisnakedmind.com forward slash experiment. This free 30-day challenge is designed to interrupt your patterns and put you back in touch with the best version of you. You remember it was that version of you that's living your most joyful life, the version that doesn't need alcohol to relax or to have a good time and is having more fun than ever. And again, this is a totally free challenge that will change everything for you. So learn more and join me 100% free at thisnakedmind.com forward slash experiment. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.